I'm a zealous Shark Tank fan. Let me tell you, watching Mr. Wonderful bash half of the pitches on the show, Robert and Lori team up to invest against Mark Cuban, and even the fidgeting of Damon as he ponders his investment as the last shark has my corneas burning at the TV screen for hours. I'm a Shark Tank freak. I've cried watching the circadian optics pitch, laughed hysterically at the slumber pod pitch. Let me tell you, it's a roller coaster of emotions. One of the first questions always posed to the business is, how did you come up with this? Which is usually followed by a heartwarming story and then a, and then it hit me moment. Well, here's my and then it hit me story. So I'm actually gonna use the name June to censor this individual throughout the talk. June in Farsi is an interchangeable word between love, soul, and life, which is what this individual is to me, which is why I'm calling her June. So June is crowded around her computer screen, which is by now scorching hot. She's going on hour 12 of working on her presentation, really trying to find the words to express her thoughts. To say that writing an application, presentation, letter, or anything in English for a native Farsi individual is daunting, draining, and demanding would be an incredible understatement. I check on June's presentation, and five minutes later, her presentation is on its final draft. Now, I am no 17-year-old who has better critical thinking skills than a literal clinical data manager. And to be clear, June is the most intelligent and diligent woman I've ever met. What I do have over June, though, is that I grew up in an English-speaking country and learned English grammar through school. This is what you could call my hit-me moment, but my favor was nothing new. While June is increasingly competent in English, she still struggles with the language barrier after decades of living in the United States. For a little background, June graduated at the top of her class in Iran and earned a bachelor's degree at one of the most prestigious schools in the country. She then immigrated to the United States in the late 1900s to escape Iran's deep, paralyzing depression and aspiration for fresh American opportunities, what many call the American dream. So, with bursts of stamina, optimism, tension, and distress, June was on her way to a fulfilling eternity in the United States. However, as soon as June stepped foot off the plane, her rejoice was undercut by the ominous urgency for money, and she was limited to labor-intensive jobs because of her very basic, basic English communication skills. An astoundingly intelligent Iranian immigrant with savage tenacity and dreams was already stuck on her first road bump. Now, June isn't the only one still struggling in this battle. 22 million adults in the US struggle with basic English communication at the workplace, in their children's schools, and in the community. Not to mention, English skills affect employment opportunities. Research shows that limited English proficiency represents a serious barrier to even finding employment, securing a stable job, and getting promoted in the workplace. We bring this bias when comparing an English proficient individual to an ESL immigrant. Someone who speaks so eloquently in the workplace somehow seems more deserving of a promotion versus an individual who is just as intelligent and works just as diligently, but is ESL. It's critical we recognize that immigrants are continually grappling with the language barrier, because as research shows, the bias Native English Americans unknowingly have constrains immigrants from these employment opportunities. And we need not just recognize these constraints as they pertain to the workplace. As America becomes increasingly more diverse, it's our job as residents to recognize the bias we unknowingly bring to the table. So back to my story. As for me, I learned Farsi first, but I had the privilege of learning English grammar through school. While our brains develop through our 20s, the optimal age to learn a second language is under 10. So, as my English proficiency surpassed Junes's, she started asking me to edit her English writing, and it became part of my daily routine. It wasn't just an extra homework assignment or a job I could push off until, until I got home. It was the on-demand help that, that I initially felt burdened with. When any immigrant needs editing in their English writing, they need it right then and there. They don't have two years to take off work in order to learn English through ESL classes or the hundreds of other online learning resources. All of these resources take up precious time that can be better spent working to reach and further sustain economic mobility. I would edit June's writing during school. I would push back homework so that June can send an email before she left work. And I would religiously fill out paperwork on the weekend. It wasn't just a one-time favor or a month-long project. It was a lifetime commitment to help June grapple with the language barrier she faced in America. As I grew older and learned more about June's struggle, though, I began to appreciate all she had sacrificed to immigrate here for new opportunities. Living in, an, in a country for an entire childhood and then miraculously leaving with no money or exact destination takes an enormous amount of ambition and grit. 
The very de definition of home on its broadest scale is stripped from an immigrant. And more than that, the knowledge that one may never return to see their family or friends again in itself is colossally daunting. Recognizing the privilege I had to grow up and live in America is what prompted my understanding of Junes' struggle. I started researching everything there is to know about immigrants grappling with the language barrier in America. I became so engrossed in this silent issue that constrains millions of immigrants from economic mobility. Analysis based off the 2003 National Assessment of Adult Literacy indicated that immigrants overwhelmingly but unsurprisingly accounted for 93% of all US adults with low oral English proficiency. Three out of five immigrants are of prime working age, and as limited English proficiency represents a serious barrier to these employment opportunities, this sector of immigrants is greatly suppressed. But there are free ESL classes and online learning resources, they say. 62% of immigrants have never taken an ESL class. Why? Because it takes up too much time. Think about it. If I was a thriving billionaire in Russia working as a CEO of a company, there would be no reason for me to quit my job leave my family, friends, home, and all I've ever known to immigrate to the United States. No offense, Mr. President, but one of the main reasons the US is such a hotspot for immigration is because of its employment and economic opportunities. So providing resources that take up the time of immigrants that could be better spent working is not a very good use. June used Grammarly to edit her English writing, but the software assumes the users know how to use prepositions, indirect objects, and other grammatical concepts specifically designed for English proficient individuals. So as you can imagine, the program was more confusing than it was helpful. As I continued researching, this habitual task of editing Junes' writing became an enjoyable one, and it sparked my passion in aiding ESL adults with a specific focus on immigrants. So, with this unquenched passion and some programming classes, I developed Be My English a platform specifically designed for immigrants who are grappling with the language barrier and are in deep need of editing in their English writing. The website works by pairing ESL immigrants to English proficient volunteers across the country via email or phone number when the users enter their contact information. When the ESL user needs help, the volunteer will receive a notification and either be able to guide the user or edit the user's writing. The actual process takes a matter of minutes while saving hours for the immigrant user. With Be My English, immigrants can finally receive on-demand help in editing emails, applications, resumes, practically anything that can be sent through the internet. There's no longer a dire need for immigrants to take two years off work to learn English through ESL classes or watch hour-long YouTube videos on the daily. The website alleviates some of the language barrier-induced stress while also eliminating what would have been imposed bias in the ESL immigrants' writing. And at what cost? five minutes of an English proficient volunteer's time to truly have an impact on the community. I cemented relationships with local ESL programs, immigrant organizations, and my own Iranian community. Finding volunteers was a difficult part. The language barrier that ESL immigrants face seems like such a secondary issue and the resources seem plentiful to them. With Be My English, ESL immigrants, ESL immigrants can finally opt into English proficient occupations knowing they have a platform to which they can submit English writing. But note that Be My English is not the end. It only targets 49% of immigrants with basic to intermediate English proficiency. Simply put, it's only a starting point for the advocation of the language barrier ESL immigrants face in America, frankly, which hinders them from economic mobility. There is so much advocacy for the ability for immigrants to start a new life in America, but almost no talk about the first roadblock they face when they get here, and frankly, the primary hindrance blocking them from reaching economic mobility. Millions of immigrants have been grappling with the language barrier in America for decades with no time or money for generic solutions. Two-thirds of immigrants have never taken an ESL class. June, an Iranian immigrant who sacrificed so much for the mere chance to thrive in America, struggles in her day-to-day -day English writing and communication. After recognizing and researching the great lack of resources in this area, I developed my own solution. Quick, easy, and personalized, Be My English is a platform that allows immigrants to finally achieve their American dream. So sharks, who's in?